Now, if we use the example of Smarties, now if you go on YouTube and you type in idea scamper, you'll see a video that talks about Smarties, but I'm going to paraphrase this for you. So substitute. So they said, look, if you had a roll of Smarties, everybody's familiar with Smarties? Yes, okay, if not, just pretend. Thank you. So they said, How, what would you substitute in Smarties? Well, instead of chocolate, why don't we put in uh, gummy, gummy fruit on top of the candy? Well, that might sound a bit, again, sacrilegious, but they did it. So they had gummy Smarties. And they said, okay, well, what if, so that's how you can substitute one thing for another from your product to make it different, to make it unique. If you combine it, now you have Smarties ice cream. You combine ice cream with Smarties. You have Smarties cake mix. Smarties and cake mix. You make a Smartie cake if you wanted to. If you wanted to adapt the product as well, when you look at it, you adapt it, and you say, okay, can I make it for a special occasion? And so now they have miniature Smarties in Easter eggs. So they adapt it. You look at magnified, miniaturized, or modified. They're packs, I've never seen them here, but they exist, of big Smarties. You have big Smarties, you got small Smarties. You modify it, how you see fit. You say, put to other uses. When you put it to other uses, when, what they're talking about there for the Smarties was to eliminate the chocolate altogether and make it a gummy Smartie or just use the hard candy in powder form. Have you all ever seen these small, uh, multicolored, powdered sugar? that are little circles, and on it says Smarties, well now you know, <laughs> right? Put to other uses, and usually use those for an intense sugar high. Eliminate, well, what happens if you eliminate color from Smarties? You know, I have black and white Smarties, so it's something different. And then finally rearrange or reverse, you have the Smartie chocolate bar. So the chocolate is on the outside, and the candy bits are on the inside. So that's how you can look at your ideas and say to yourself, how can I make it different? You can use the scamper methodology. Fair enough? Yeah, makes sense? Get some ideas, make it different, try something new. That's what we're about. All right, so what do we want to avoid? Identifying the wrong problem. Sometimes we have a solution where no problem exists. And we say this would be a great product, and then customers go, but I don't need it. Huh. I didn't study that part. So we don't want to identify the wrong problem. Judging ideas too quickly, uh, there's the example in the company Corning. They invented a glass back in the 60s that couldn't be scratched, not scratched at all, but it was very heavy, very dense. And they were like, what are we going to do with this? I don't know. Put it in the warehouse. Maybe one day we'll find a use for it. And so, no, on many of the cell phones, we have Gorilla Glass. And Gorilla Glass is that same idea of the Corning Glass, now used some 50, 60 years later. All right, so sometimes you don't want to judge ideas too quickly as too good, or again, so stopping with the first good idea, yeah, that's the one. You can have many ideas, have as many ideas as possible, use the scamper approach. We had another girl, Rhea, from Princess Margaret, and she decided, I'm going to be a cereal entrepreneur. Not cereal like Kellogg's with Frosted Flakes, but cereal meaning that she was going to open up many businesses because she thought, I have a lot of talent. Now this girl had a lot of, you know, gumption, a lot of confidence, and very resilient. So she said, I cut lawns, I clean pools, and I then, this year, because she's been doing it for two or three years, this year she hired staff. And we're like, you hired staff? Yeah, I had about four staff helping me with the cutting lawns. Oh, she had a community movie night as well, where everybody paid to come and watch a movie uh, with her. She sold different don she sold donuts as well. Or, did, is there anything you didn't do, Rhea? Yeah. Well, you know, I only had a month because the challenge is only a month, so she was limited. You know, so what would happen if she was unlimited? All right, Richard Brands will have a run for his money. And so we asked her, you know, what would your employees say about you as a boss? And she said, you know, they would tell you, don't mess with Rhea's money. Said, okay, sure. And what would your customers say about your business? And she said, that I don't take no for an answer. All right. So she gave the example. Would you like a chocolate donut? First of all, no, I'm not a big chocolate donut, but it's chocolate. <laughs> and 
it has little sprinkles. <laughs> no, not really. But maybe it's not for you. Maybe you're buying it for someone you really care about. <laughs> Wouldn't someone you really care about like the donut? And I'm thinking, I want a donut. And this time, Jill is only an imaginary donut she has in her hand right now. But I would have bought that donut. Right? So she kept going and kept going. And it's that type of resiliency that we know as adults might have a smaller amount of because of what we've gone through that we need to get back. Because it's within us all to be that resilient. And there's so many examples of people being told no. We have mailing fashion in Trinidad who, you know, at first was just based in Trinidad, but now her designs are now going all around the world and being sold all around the world. Miss Braffitt is actually a business, a lady who started a business because she was concerned about women and breast cancer, helping women find proper fitting bras for them and giving them consultations on that. And then part of her proceeds or part of her initiative is to raise awareness for breast cancer. You have Hot Mamas, which is pepper sauce, but Hot Mama, and if you meet her, you know, I wouldn't say crazy, but you know, in a good way, good way. She decided to have a pepper sauce that was sweet. So it burned you, but you know, you liked it because it tasted sweet as it was going down. So just doing different things. Rich Farms then made jellies, and pepper jellies are nothing new, but she liked infusing, you know, pepper into her jellies and jams. And then Caribbean Agro Producers Corporation. This lady was a doctor and working in New York. And she started to become severely ill. She thought to herself, this is crazy. I'm taking all these different medications and I'm not getting better. It was to the point, I believe she said, she couldn't walk. So she went home to Dominica. She looked around and saw all the different herbs, all the different plants. And she started doing research. And so her business now is about creating different teas that will help you to get better. And she uses different, there's like guinea hen weed, uh, or you know, like guinea hen weed. There's different ones, rose tea, uh, a different kind of rose, not the normal rose that you know. But different ones that have all these different antibodies and properties that help make you healthy. And so she was inspired by her own sickness. Her husband had a, an ailment as well, and the doctor says, you know, you have about six months. Usually they give you six months, right? Six months to live, and she was like, don't mind them. Come home. So came home to Dominica and she said he outlived most of the doctors that prescribe his death. So again, once you're passionate about your idea, you want to put through the initiative, the time, the energy, the effort, you'll get it done. Ladies, how many of you all know about Spanx? Right? Those, I think it's called form fitting wear, form wear, form wear is called something. I can't tell you the exact details. However, this same lady said, look, hey, I can put this hosiery or whatever you can, you know, on and make me look good. And she thought, let me go and sell this idea, you know, to the major manufacturers of the bras and undergarments. And they were like, nobody would ever buy that. And she kept going. And everybody kept saying, nobody would ever buy that. Why are you, going, why are you wasting your time? This doesn't make sense. Told no over and over and over. And she said, every time you told me no, I was just more resilient more confident that my idea was going to work. So, as an entrepreneur, do you have to be a little crazy? Maybe, maybe. You can keep as much sanity as you can. But she kept going and now worth over a billion dollars US. Yeah. Body shop, same thing. Making the same creams, etc. Then you had a lady who is a surgeon and was originally from Nigeria and she was trained in the UK. And she thought, look, back in Nigeria, it's very hard for us to get to different remote places to help perform surgery, emergency medical services, and fly people out. I'm going to start that business. And so she has flying doctors. Food tends to be one where you can start making, providing you follow health and safety guidelines. Make sure we get that on camera. Yes. But once you do that, you know, you can start baking, you can start making, you start selling. So it's up to you. And even then, you have the different niches, the different areas that you can focus on. So now we see that there's a big explosion now of cupcakes. You know, not literally a big explosion of cupcakes, which would be fun. But you have a lot of people wanting to sell cupcakes. And now there are different kinds that you can sell. Because before, it was just a chocolate cupcake with some vanilla icing, or a vanilla cupcake with chocolate icing, or if you want to get adventurous, chocolate with chocolate, vanilla with vanilla, you know. But now we have them with 
They look like Cookie Monster, they're the Sesame Street gang, right? I've now seen one that are for adults that have a Bailey's. You have a Guinness cupcake, which if any of you may, please give me a card and let me know. But you know, so we have all different kinds of different niches that we can start tapping into for things that we looked at before and said, well, that's just a cupcake. No longer is. Do you know anyone? One of the great things about this program is with the Barbados Youth Business Trust, they're going to help provide you with mentors, people who have gone through similar circumstances and become successful. And that's key for you. You need to build a network of support as an entrepreneur because as I said before, the number one thing is resiliency. You're going to be facing a lot of challenges. So who can you lean on and ask and seek guidance from? And so the Barbados Youth Business Trust is going to do a fantastic job helping you with that. But now that we have the web, you also have different forums as well on the web that you can tap into and find like-minded people who are going through the same challenges as you who want to help. So that's a good place to start as well. And then the final, one of the final questions with the idea assessment is what's the hardest part? About starting a business. Now oftentimes it's the big one. And everybody knows what a big one is. I can see your people's dilated from here. It's the money. We need to get the money. Yes, we do need to have capital in certain instances to start our ideas. But how can we become creative? It's not just about being an entrepreneur for the product or service, but it's about being entrepreneurial in your mindset to be resourceful. Tony Robbins, who's a personal development guru, says there's no such thing as unresourceful people. They're only unresourceful states of mind.